here with Death by Stereo. Introduce yourselves. I'm Ephraim. Hi, I'm Dan. Hi, I'm Robbo. I'm JP. I'm Mike. wrapped a month-long tour in Europe. Can you share some of your most memorable stories from that run? I'd say my most memorable story was uh, docking with Dan. Yep. He's uncircumcised and I am, so it just works. It was right on in there. Yeah. We were in uh, Budapest, we were drinking Palinka, and we were doing some uh, Gypsy Coke at this weird uh, after-hours bar. <laughs> Things got really weird real quick. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, <laughs> no, I mean, I don't even know where to begin. Yeah. Just We've got to play so many amazing shows and hang with so many old, amazing friends and make so many new friends. Being in Europe is always an incredible experience and Europe just had, has a different sort of appreciation for music than most places. It's incredible. The energy is through the roof. Totally. Yeah. I saw that you guys also got stranded on the way back. British Airways, right? <laughs> British Airways fucked us. Fuck you, British yeah, Airways. They lost all our luggage you and guitars suck. and all that. But uh, we made it back. And uh, we're here. We're, we made it in time. We're going to play our show tonight. Everything all's well that ends well. We did have a phenomenal time in Italy. Went to dinner. Got some uh, grappa, oh, some yeah. buca. Yeah. Mirtho. What, a, oh, yeah. what is it? Uh, Mirtho. OK, yeah. yeah Mirtho. That too. Um, <laughs> Pizza with no pineapple. It was great. Oh, my pineapple pizza was amazing. Yeah, Dan actually had one big pineapple with a corn in the middle of it. It was pretty amazing. It was, yeah. So for everyone out there, Dan does not like corn, much less on pizza, much less pizza with pineapple and corn. There's no place for that in Dan's life. So if you're out there, we're actually starting a campaign to get people to order pizzas to Dan with pineapple and pizza on them. Pineapple and corn. I have a personal there. vendetta against the pineapple on the pizza. Yeah. It is just morally wrong in Actually, all ways. One of yeah. one of the nights that we were out there for dinner, we got a pizza with pineapple and a pizza with corn. That's no joke. That was the entire dinner. Pizza with pineapple and pizza with corn. Dan was not happy. That was actually on my you know, <laughs> Dan Dan says the only people that should eat pineapple pizza are homeless dogs. Well, I think it's kind of gross because it's like it's kind of mushy, you know? Like, you get it, it's like pineapple's not really meant to be warm. I think it's fucking weird when they make pineapple warm. You know what, though? Everyone's gonna hate me. I think it's pretty <laughs> damn good. <laughs> I'm with you, I'm with you, it. Dan. You order pizza, he's like, hey, wanna share a half and half pizza with me? And well, you put pineapple in it? He's like, yeah, nope. I don't even wanna see even half of it. I don't even want it in the same <laughs> fucking box. No can do, man. I'm with you. I'm with you. I think it's weird. But uh, overall, Europe was great. It was great to go to a lot of familiar places, some new places, and see all our friends, anywhere from our friends in Poland to our friends in Germany and Kreuzberg, you know, and there are friends all over the place in the Czech. It, it was just great. And uh, uh, we have an amazing driver in Europe. His name is Zed. Yeah, Zed. And uh, he's become an honorary Mexican. We call him the Czechano. He's from the Czech Republic. So he's a Chexican. This week was actually your guys' 20 year anniversary as a band. What are some of the things that you're most proud of accomplishing and what are some of the biggest struggles you've faced in the last 20 years? One of the things I'm most proud of accomplishing in these 20 years yeah. is pantsing JP in a McDonald's <laughs> in line, dick out. <laughs> it was amazing. And then Mike, <laughs> Mike <laughs> actually got me in the terminal on the way home, dick out. Just like getting ready to get on the plane, just pants me. I'm like, oh, I got one about Particularly planned with a bunch of stuff in his hand, so he couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't do anything about it because I was holding all my bag yeah, and everything. Like, like five seconds of song time. His first tour was with uh, Agnostic Front with us. He's wearing basketball oh. shorts backstage. Vinny <laughs> Stigma, Roger Ray, hanging out backstage. I go right and boom, pull them both, pull his pants down. Dick out in front of fucking Agnostic Front. <laughs> <laughs> first tour. So, do none of you guys wear underwear, or you just manage to get the underwear? No, with you the get pants? the whole package. You just okay. grab it. You get a good grip and just. Yeah. Pull front. Yeah. I always get a good grip. If there's one thing I can say about Dan, he's got a great yank. Yeah. <laughs> Dan gives good grip. Good, he gets great yank. 
Oh man. Well, so you guys are actually heading back to Europe again next month to open up for the Cancer Bats in London for four nights in a row. What are some of the things that you guys do to play a fresh show every night when you're playing multiple nights in the same venue? Cocaine. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, actually, we, we uh, you know what? We just, we don't, a lot Drug of bands stick to a script to and they're not very spontaneous. We just feel it. We go for it. We just do it. Hey, if it feels good, do it. We just kind of do our thing. You know what I mean? And I know that might sound cheesy or whatever, but we, it's just what we do. And we're really excited to go right back so soon. And we're actually, we're playing the Manchester Punk Festival, four shows in London with Cancer Bats. Then we're going to headline one show in London. And then we're playing, where else are we playing? Uh, Bristol, Stafford, Glasgow. Edinburgh. Bristol, Stafford, Glasgow. What? Edinburgh. Edinburgh, Edinburgh. Scotland. Um, Killer. Places. Yeah. And, and, and assorted places in the greater UK area. We're playing Stonehenge. <laughs> well, so I also saw on Instagram that you guys are always saying, bring drugs when you were in Europe. Yeah. Uh, because obviously you that can't never bring happened. your own. Yeah, Do people right. actually bring them for you? He's talking about ibuprofen. Yeah. yeah, we when we say I that, get yeah. headaches Thank and you, I need yeah, I need uh, real gain and Viagra, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that is that a joke or do you mean it? Is no, it a half we're, joke? We're serious. We need Rogaine, Viagra, and Tums <laughs> and Tums. <laughs> Very Little, serious. Yellow, Nuprin. And you know sometimes people do bring us drugs. Mostly Rogaine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might have been getting. You know what's yeah. weird? Yeah. No, because the Rogaine didn't work. Dan didn't work for Dan, but it worked on me somehow. Yeah. Yeah. It's so yeah. weird. I don't know what happened. Yeah, your hair, hair is really long, long now. Like I remember for the longest time you had like no hair. Yeah. Well, you know, I just I'm kind of, I just became like a hippie man. You know, it's cool. It's he's cool. He's doing it while he still can. Yeah, that was my whole goal. I'm growing my hair. He'll be at the drum circle in Venice on Sunday. I figured since most of my friends are losing their hair, it's maybe the last time in my life I may be able to grow mine. So I'm going for it while I still can. <laughs> Wikipedia, it was probably kind of a joke, but maybe true that you wake up early every day to trim, shampoo, and condition your mustache. It's entirely true. <laughs> entirely true. Everything that it says on Wikipedia is entirely true about me. <laughs> so, but what inspired you to grow your mustache out? I saw some old footage where you had no facial hair at all, and what inspired you to style it this way? I, I couldn't afford razors for a while, so I just kind of went with it. They start growing, so I figured, hey, my, you know, not his chin though. It here it is. <laughs> Just now I'm stuck with it. What am I going to do? Shave yeah. it now? I think my mom would probably stop talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> How stiff is it? Like, can we have, like, <laughs> compared, <laughs> compared to my hair? <laughs> 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 it is what, it is what she said. It's like a 16-year-old with high-speed internet skin. <laughs> Oh, no. That's amazing. That's amazing. I saw also you guys have an army of fans with death by stereo tattoos. How did that get started and then later become a trending hashtag? It's super weird. Uh, I we <laughs> were started it. yeah we were banned for like two weeks, and one of our former members was get Jim Miner, who ended up becoming this famous tattoo guy. So anyways, he had to get a job at a tattoo shop. We had just come up with that logo in his brother's bedroom on a piece of graph paper. And he's like, I have to tattoo someone to get a job at a tattoo shop to get this apprenticeship. And I was like, I'll do it. So I just went down there, I'm gonna go for it, I have a feeling. <laughs> and 20 years later, there's like all these people with the tattoos, it's mind blowing. Like, I've seen them on people's heads, on their throats, uh, you know, it, it's- The guy on his belly when you guys were in Europe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, on their hands. Uh, uh, it's so crazy. We look, we refer to the Death by Stereo Gooch. tattoo as the everlasting job stopper. <laughs> but for, but us. Uh, for us, yeah. yeah. For us. No, but it, it, it's actually, I'm, we're so grateful, and we feel like we have this family all over the world now, and we're so honored that someone would do that, you know? And I just hope that we can keep, you know, I, I, I just hope that we can just keep doing things that, that they love, and we can keep connecting, and, and keep this family going and growing, you know? Yeah, yeah that's it's cool. A, it's truly a, an honor. 
Yeah, it's, I mean, it just shows how important your music is to people. Like, they just, you know, it, your music means so much to them that they're re willing to rock your logo for life. Crazy. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. The one where someone had it, like, on their wrist right there. Yeah. That, that was a really nice tattoo, and, too. And, like, mine is, like, kind of small on the back of my calf, and then I see people like, go boom, you know, or the whole side, you know, and I'm like, well, that's so mine. I can't believe that came from my little tattoo. Yeah. You know, and it, it's, I'm just totally, I, I guess I could just say I'm honored and, and I feel so grateful. Yeah, your fans fucking love you guys. Like We love them with all of our hearts, you know. <laughs> to one of my friends the other day, uh, my friend Sam, he's in this band Dead Fucking Serious, and he was telling me about um, a show he went to of yours 15 years ago in Portland. And he was like, oh, there were some Nazis there, and this is the moment where I was like, Ephraim is just like the coolest fucking front man. Because he's like, he literally stopped the show and pointed to the fucking Nazis in the back. The crowd parted, everyone looks back, and then he said that Ephraim just goes, I will literally fuck you in your ass if you don't leave. <laughs> I mean, you hear that, and then they, uh, they were that's so... That's what you got coming for you, yeah. motherfuckers. That's what's going to happen. That's why there's like 100 of them here today. Like, yeah, they all want to get laid. Want to get want, now everywhere I go, there's Nazis that want to get laid. He's got that pretty hair. That is, I can't believe Wow. 15 years ago. Wow. 15 years ago. <laughs> Plenty of Nazis out there. Well, he was telling me the story when so I... Cool. And um, he said it was at a club called the Meow Meow in Yeah, the Meow Meow. Oh, my yeah. God. Um, well, so what is your opinion on bands today who are, all of you, who are maybe scared of, you know, standing up to people like that? That is kind of a controversial thing. Like, some bands really fight for it and say, get the fuck out, we don't condone it. But other bands are like, they don't, you know, they're, they're a little afraid to stand up for it. You know what? Back in the day, in the 90s, it was a huge problem. Yeah. There was Nazis everywhere, and it took all of us as, I guess, a scene to stand up against them to get rid of them. And it seems like in these times, unfortunately, it's becoming prevalent again because of our current uh, current government that's in power. But uh, uh, you just have to stand up. You have to stand up for yourself and don't be afraid. Those guys are weak and they're nothing. They are only they only have strength in numbers, and there's more of us than there is of them. And when I'm at a show, I always am surprised when the crowd starts parting around a couple knuckleheads because I'm like, there's 300 of you, there's two of them, yeah. you know, and if we stand together, we can let them know they are not welcome, exactly. you know, exactly. fuck Nazis. And the other, the undercover Nazis too, we, we know who you are, Yeah, exactly. the fuck out of here, you ain't uh, fooling yeah, anybody. Yeah, there's no sitting on the fence. Asshole. You know what I mean? Yeah. Out, not welcome. So, you know, and that means you too, fucking Donald Trump. Which, which leads me into, uh, we, we have a, uh, our current EP, we have a song about Donald Trump, and it's called I Think About Killing You Every Day. Oh, man. So, check it out. clothing company called Learn to Forget and you're also sponsoring the sold out show tonight. Yeah. How did your company get started and can you talk about how it relates to shows now? Uh, well, kind of, it started with my partner Riley Herrera. He just made a few pieces of clothing. I just kind of approached him to kind of see what was holding him back from going to the next thing and trying to, you know, make it a more real company. And we got together, just shared ideas and just kind of made it what it is and still trying to grow. Yeah. Just trying to associate ourselves with things we think is real and is good. So. You know, this is a cool first show to be a part of. Yeah, it seems like you guys are really busy. I saw you were just at the Agenda show. and yeah, um, trying to stay busy, you know? Yeah, it seems it like you're doing a lot of great things for your company and just really yes. getting the name out there. And, um, I, you know, it seems like a really cool brand. Thank you very much. Uh, LearnToForgetBrand.com. And no. on Instagram as LearnToForget underscore. <laughs> Pants and 
some people too. It's actually pretty fun. People won't do it to girls because they, you know, we're girls. And you're not wearing sweats. My mom always gets pissed when they do it to her. <laughs> at the airport? Yeah. We'll be at Hometown Buffet. She fucking loses it. He pants her at church one time. Yeah. Oh, I think, remember in Burgos, Spain? In front of that statue, the, the man holding the little kid? <laughs> okay. So there was a statue in Spain in this park, right? And it was like of a man holding hands with a boy. But the statues had dicks, right? And I'm all, hey, take a funny picture of me, like, holding a dick. <laughs> There's all these people in the park and all these old ladies on a bench. And the mic goes up behind me, pantses me while I'm holding a dick. My dick's out. And all these old ladies are like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they have a photo of it. They have a photo of it. Greatest Christmas card. Yeah. <laughs> my, Mike destroyed me. That, that was a very good day. It was a very, very, very <laughs> profitable day for me. I mean, like, Honestly, pants like somebody just never fucking gets old. It's, like it's yeah. it's never not funny. It's like it a fart. Get old. Yeah. It's never not funny. Just saying. Except when you're on a plane. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, exactly. How is that when you guys travel um, by air and you know you have like obviously there's not five seats in a row. So what is the reaction you get when you have to sit next to people with all the jokes that you guys have? Do they just like fucking hate you? You start Some drinking with us. Them. Some people yeah. have fun with us. We, yeah, we've definitely the, partied the last, like crazy with people on the plane. Home. Yeah. The, the last flight home, there was this random people sitting next to us, and we all started drinking wine together. And just by the end of the flight, it was like, hey, you're a nice guy. <laughs> my guy yeah. drink what, like 10, 12? Yeah. I, I, I legitimately I cried like, at the end of Coco. <laughs> yeah. cried, Robo he, did he cry at the end of Coco. He teared up. at the end of Coco. Yeah, he did. He was. It's an amazing movie. I was wine and Coco, and I started crying. Yeah. You guys released your EP that you were talking about in 2016. Do you have plans to do any more new music sometime soon? Yes. Yes, we are uh, currently in the beginning stages of writing a new record. Oh, yay. So we're writing a full length, and we hope to get that out as soon as possible. But uh, we're working on new music, and uh, we're basically never going to stop. The whole band I is working in your on face. new music with several projects. Dan plays in a band called Zebrahead. Yeah. Mike is in The Adolescents. JP and Mike are in a band called Common War. Rob was in a band called Caustic. I am also in the Voodoo Glow Skulls and Manic Hispanic. Myself and Dan also play in a Danzig tribute band called Dirty Black Summer. So we're always busy. We're all making tons of records. So just keep your eyes out on our social media yeah. and keep your eyes out for new DBS on the horizon. We can't wait. So music is just life for you guys. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Rock and roll. And pantsing. And pantsing. And pantsing. Always. Oh. Well, thank you guys so much for taking the time today. This was so fun. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank very you much. guys. Thank you, JP. Oh, thank We're dead by stereo, and you're watching Last, Last Rockers, Rockers TV. TV. Yeah. Ow!